Hey, what's up guys? Crazy here, back in No Man's Sky, and today we're going to be going over some of the best upgrades that you should be using in this game as soon as possible. I'm going to go over all of the inventories, including your exosuit, your ship, as well as your multi-tool, and we're also going to be covering the upgrade modules and how it is best to set them up. So let's jump right in, and of course, also a big shout out to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video once more. Instant Gaming is a website that sells games at some of the cheapest prices you can find around. So if you also enjoy discounts, then go ahead and check out the link down below. Anyway, let's start things off with the basics as we usually do and there's actually two types of tech you can install in your inventories. We of course have the base tech which is something you unlock on for example the Nexus. There's a bunch of NPCs over here that have a bunch of upgrades you can unlock. So uh, there's one for the exosuit, there's some for the ship, there's one for the multi-tool over there. In this case it's basically kind of like a skill tree that you unlock as you progress through the game doing some missions and as you progress and unlock them you can buy them by using nanite clusters but as you can see these don't really range up in class too much typically they are c class b class a class and very rarely you can find them as an s class even this translator over here is the exception as this was introduced only in the beyond update so how do you actually get to upgrade these well here is where the upgrade modules come into play so let's go to the space station where you can find them. So here we are and as you can see there's a bunch of other vendors over here as well that can also sell tech. For example in the case of the exosuit uh, there's a bunch of upgrade modules over here that are sold by this NPC and these also cost nanites. But the exception over here is that these are movable, you can buy them, you don't need to craft them, they are they just cost nanites. This is like one of the main distinctions between upgrade modules and the base tech. The base tech requires certain elements in order to be built, like for example if I were to build this thermic layer it would cost dioxide, silver and copper, whereas the upgrade modules are simply installable after you purchase them and that is pretty much it. Also the upgrade modules are the ones that provide the highest bonuses while the base stack provides functionalities but not always. The distinction sometimes becomes unclear as the base stack can also provide some regular upgrades themselves. But now that that is out of the way, what are some of the best upgrade modules and what should you be doing from here on with this knowledge? Well, let's start with the exosuit itself. At least in my opinion, I believe that one of the first upgrades that you should be doing is for your jetpack. This will make traversing the terrain on certain planets much, much easier. You will have a much bigger jetpack boost, you will be able to boost for much longer than ever before and just having three S-class upgrade modules to your jetpack will make a tremendous difference. So whenever you find yourself on one of these space stations and you haven't fully upgraded yourself, go ahead, check out these NPCs and see what they have in store. If you find something as class and you need it, this is something that you will most probably want to get. For example, you might want a shield module, which in this case is pretty much top notch. This one spawned as a maximum rank, so this might be something that I want to buy later on or use later on and I would keep tabs on that. From here on, typically, I I go for either life support or simply shield modules. Typically I go for the life support first because it's it just increases your HP more, you can survive for longer. In this case the upgrade modules provide 71% life support tanks and uh, that is quite a lot of HP. This means that I can fall from some pretty great heights and I will barely get any damage on my HP. The same goes if I'm in some hazardous environments or if an NPC attacks me. From here on typically I always go into upgrade my shields because it pretty much protects me from any hazardous environment before tapping into my actual HP. So I actually have a second layer of protection before any damage is being done onto my HP with the exception of falling damage. Now if you're going into farming for example, if you're starting to farm and doing all that kind of stuff, as soon as you get the hazmat gauntlet go ahead and purchase this and install it because this will let you get the hazardous substances, many of which are usable 
feasible at making farms and all that kind of stuff or creating some really advanced recipes. The hazmat gauntlet is very important even early on and there's even a mission to get this. Now before moving on to the next section there's a couple of upgrades here that I really really like. I've noticed that I can use my thrusters underwater much much longer if I do this, if I have this upgrade over here. So if you're playing underwater a lot, efficient water jets are going to be very useful. Outside of this, once you reach the end game, you can start looking into some more complex stuff to increase your survivability even more. These are specialized hazardous shields. If you build these, they don't actually require recharging and they also provide a bonus buff. In this case, 21% to whatever environmental hazard there is. Also, before moving on, don't forget that you have a tech section, just like how your starship has. Multitool is the only exception. And what this means is that you can stack these two times. You cannot install more than of the same three upgrade modules in the same inventory. But you can bypass that by installing additional three in the technology tab. Now moving on to the multi-tool itself, again the upgrade modules are on the space station and they can range anywhere from C to S, so again pay close attention to what you're going to upgrade next, so if you find something as an S class always try to grab it. The regular upgrade tree with the base tech can be found again on the Nexus at this NPC iteration EOS. So again, this is something that you will have to complete missions for and then unlock with nanite clusters. And I have already done so since I'm pretty much in the end game. But let's go over the more important multi-tool upgrades. Now even though you can see here that my mining beam is the first one that has been arranged over here, it's actually not the first upgrade that I recommend you guys doing, especially in the beginning of the game. For the multi-tool specifically, I encourage you as soon as you can to unlock one of these. S-Class Analysis Visor Upgrade. Flora Analysis Rewards 8 thousand percent fauna analysis rewards again almost eight thousand and this applies to all of them they can cap up to about nine thousand i believe so you kind of have to be a little bit lucky but this is a huge increase in the amount of units that you get rewarded by simply upgrading your scanner this is why in the beginning of the game it is very important to always go for the scanner first at least one s class upgrade module it basically gives you from about a few thousand units from scanning one creature to like half a million if you have a full line like this. From here on you can pretty much upgrade anything you want but I do recommend following the mining beam upgrades first, specifically the advanced mining laser. You might have encountered at some point some big rocks that are unminable by your um, default beam so this is exactly what you need to do in order to get those large or rare resource deposits. And the second one is actually newly introduced in Beyond I believe, this is the optical drill and this one increases the yield that you get from just harvesting. Once you have both of these you can go ahead and jump on to getting these upgrade modules. Again 3S class because that is the maximum cap and from here on you're pretty much free to do whatever you want to. Maybe the terrain manipulator is something that you might consider because this is actually quite useful to getting metallic elements. So if you find copper or magnetized ferrite well this is going to be useful for that. Also don't forget about the newly added survey device because this is what you use in order to find the new hotspots including of course the metals, the gases and the electromagnetic fields. So just to recap, scanner first with the upgrade modules, then the mining beam with the advanced mining and the optical drill, then the upgrade modules, finally into the terrain manipulator and the survey device and from here on you're free to do whatever you want. Last but not least also go over the starship itself. Now let's begin with some of the upgrades that I typically go for. So uh, normally in the beginning hours you would want to get the hyperdrive upgrade as soon as possible. The hyperdrive lets you do interstellar travel and it's actually one of the first missions that you will be doing in the beginning of the game. From there on you will have to decide if you want to fully upgrade the hyperdrive or if you want to go for something else because there's two routes you can pick. If you're doing a lot of interstellar traveling then maybe the upgrade modules for the hyperdrive are going to be very useful to you. It increases your hyperdrive range by quite a lot like 200 light years each and also the warp cell efficiency. After this you will also have to take a look at the drives themselves. There are three actual drives over here that you can install and uh, these are actually the base tech, the base tech upgrade to the hyperdrive and
and not actual upgrade modules. So these will cost elements and materials in order to be built. There are three of them in the game, including of course the Emerald, the Cadmium, and the indium drive. Of course the best one is the indium which also works backwards as in it also works in everything else including of course red and green solar systems. But yeah from here on the most important of them all are of course the pulse engine and the launch thrusters. This is because you are going to be using these pretty much extensively. Um, two of the upgrades that I really recommend over here, well one of the upgrades actually is the launch system recharger. I believe this was also added newly in the beyond update and what this does is that this this automatically refuels your launch thrusters by just waiting a little bit of time. So if you go on a planet, park your ship, just leave it over there and these will recharge them automatically, which means that you don't have to spend that much time gathering dihydrogen. Now once you go into the mid to late game, here is where you will want to get two of these scanners. Maybe even get them sooner rather than later. Especially the economy scanner. This is going to be the most important of them all. The conflict, not so much. So as soon as you can unlock the economy scanner, go ahead and build it as soon as possible, especially if you're into trading or if you're searching very good economy systems. From here on, it's all a matter of preference. You can upgrade your shields if you want more defense or you can go straight into upgrading your attacks if you want to do more damage, for example. Of course, the same goes for the tech tab. You can stack three of these, three of these upgrade modules on the tech tab as well. But with that, I believe we have covered all of the best upgrades in the game. Now let's go briefly over the proximity bonuses. As you can see, most of these have colored borders. If, for example, I take one of these upgrades and put it randomly over here without anything near it, it will not have a colored border. Or if I put it near something random, such as this, you will see that these don't have any borders anymore. And that is because you will need to group these up to each specific technology. So for example, for the jetpack, you will want to have these upgrade modules pretty much surrounding it to get the most amount of benefits. You can put these in a straight line, you can make any other combinations as long as they touch. So they need to touch in order to have those borders, which means that they will get bonuses to their already existing stats. And the better you stack them, the more stats you will get. So let's just go into the starship and check how these numbers work up let's say with the damage. This is a potential of 6,400 damage. So if I start taking, let me just put the phase beam over here, if I start taking these upgrades out, you will see that that will go down. Even though these touch, they will go down. And if I break the link, like putting it over here, it, uh, yeah, the damage goes even lower. But generally speaking, I have found that if you have these all touching each other as well as the source stack, whatever it is, it will give you the maximum potential stats. And this goes for the hyperdrive, for everything else as well. But anyway, this has been all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, a thumbs up on it would be super appreciated. Also subscribe and activate the notification bell. And I'll see you guys later.